makes me blind I just wanna see the light Breathe in Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome live from the West Fargo Sports Arena. Sorry, we had some audio issues, so we're joining you just as the referee is going to drop the puck at center ice. So, Sean, I'm going to have to hand it over to you, and you're going to have to take it away very early here, my friend. How about that? Wow, let's go. <laughs> All right. Puck is dropped. Game is underway. Man, it feels like it's day one. It's been about three weeks. <laughs> All right. Puck shot into the central zone. West Fargo cannot keep it in. All right, we're going to try this again. All right, Central regrouping in their own zone. It's going D to D. Pass. Knifed in. They're going to change already. Welcome, all of you that are tuning in. This is so good. <laughs> it's been a while. Missed you. All right, play is just underway. One minute into this super pivotal game, we'll get into that a little later. We didn't have time to uh, discuss our pregame uh, notes and uh, keys of the game, but hey, let's go. We're excited. For those of you that uh, are unaware, the uh, Central Knights are, are kind of going through uh, the East and only surrendering about a little less than one goal. They've given up. One goal twice, got a shutout in the other one, and uh, a tall order, and they uh, beat uh, the, the Green Wave 5-4. Yeah, if you look at their goaltender statistics history, they have Preston Diedrich, who's yeah. in net tonight, he's at 88%, and then Jackson Washburn is at 96%, as we see a nice glove save there by by uh, Mason Beater. Yeah, so last time... Jaden Beater, I apologize. Jaden, yeah. I I see the Peters right there. Uh, yeah, since the last time uh, we've had a goaltending change. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. The, Sh the Cheyenne was on the road the last five games, and now you could say on the road, three of those were in the metro area here. But they, you know, after Thanksgiving, they went to Roseau, and then they also went to the Appen. So it's been a long time since they've been yeah. in the friendly confines here. A couple tough losses. We'll get into that later. But right now, let's just get into this game. All right, 0-0, zero, zero, two minutes in. Oh, shot whistled over top by Central. Real physical play there by uh, Keen Hannistead. Just ran. Uh, that's Wyatt Blake, who's up at the puck at the point there for the Central Knights. And Hannistead just just went right through him and put put him on his backside. So Hannistead's coming to play early. That's good. Uh, if you haven't been following Cheyenne over the last little bit, goal scoring is something that they need to uh, request from Santa this year. The goals have been hard to come by. Yeah, they have, and you know, in those five <coughs> games, two of them, they were shut out, one at Rosa, and then their most recent uh, contest at Fargo North just the other night. Uh, Sean, we were there, and they, yep. had, they had plenty of chances and opportunities, especially yeah. thought that went up off the netting. That Blinky, definitely went off Blinky the netting. It, it did, for sure, and I don't know, the ref was looking right at it, but yeah, you know, <coughs> they had opportunities, I just snake bit, maybe missed the net just a little wide, and, and, and uh, Fargo North has a uh, good goaltender as well, so yeah, scoring goals is, is going to be something that and they're going to have to continue to work to find. All right, Trace Meyer paying the price in there to bring that puck down low. Knights countering. Looked like it was offside. No icing, nothing. All right. 
Come on, refs, get in the game. All right, going back. Not so far away, that was Finn Lockwood looking up ice, getting into his right winger. Nice speed on the right side there. That is their number one line. Oh, Johnson's going to go for that one. Yeah. Put Blue right into the boards there. Well, let's see what they're going to go with here. I don't yeah, know. If I don't know. Gonna go. Oh, I'm wondering if they're maybe going to go with a board. I don't think it was quite all the way from behind. I think he went in with his shoulder. So, so if we can catch right. that on a replay or not, but yeah. So I was looking at uh, the uh, output uh, of the uh, Central Knights. They got 13 players on the roster with at least two points in only four games. And you compare that with the Mustangs roster, six games, five players with two points or more. So, yeah, and they're led by a very common name if you're a follower of North Dakota hockey and central hockey in particular for many years, as you see a, a Panzer lead the top of the score sheet there, and they are going to go for five for oh. Dylan Johnson. So for Dylan, unfortunately, they had two penalties in the first period the other night up at Fargo North, and then uh, just about, uh, about about three minutes into this game here, uh, Central's going to get a five-minute uh, opportunity on the power play, so which is a continuous one as well. Yeah, no surprise here. Central's got their number one line. That's Panzer at center, Mac Blue on the left side, and Gavin Walkenfoos. Let's see if they can get this started. All right, this would be a big kill for Cheyenne if we can kill this five-minute major. Doing a nice job so far. Central trying to go up the middle. Nice job there, though. It was Weber, Weber that stepped up and then... Uh, Cooper Klaus came to protect. Leading the charge all the way into the offensive zone. All right. Knight's going to try this again. Looking to bring us up on this right-hand side. Pass a little out of the reach of the right winger. Oh, attempted toe drag. It was a good play by Lachowski coming yep. back there. It was a nice move into the, you know, the zone. He faked out the uh, Cheyenne defender pretty good there, but nice play by Lachowski. So where was, on the coach's poll, where were the uh, Central Knights? Four? Two, I bet. Two? All right. Yep. And uh, I don't know if... Our Actually, I apologize. Know. They were not two. Fargo North was two. Oh, okay. Red River was one. Central was three. Gotcha. So both were Grand Forks teams undefeated so far in the season, right? Yes, they are. Nine and zero. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It's just part of the culture there, my friend. Nice job. Well, we'll get into that in a second. Looking at, at Central schedule, and, and you know, as a coach, you always want to find what your team is made of. And their next three here, they play at Fargo North. Uh, on the 19th. Yep. Two days later, they play Red River on the 21st, and then six days later on the 27th, they play Warroad. So, you know, those are going to be you're looking. You know, North was voted two, Red River's voted one, and Red River's undefeated, and then Warroad's one of the top teams in the whole state of Minnesota again this year. So, you know, after this game, their their next three, those are going to be three really good, uh, really good tests. Excuse me. Yeah. Might have to make a road trip. Well, two of, two of them are on the road. One's one's at North, so we could right. certainly make depending, that one. Depending on the weather, yeah, yeah. we're in holidays. Yeah. All right. 12-10 remaining in this first period. 3-15 remaining on the five-minute major to Johnson. So far, no real scoring threat from Central, so good job to the Cheyenne penalty killers here. Oh, is it room on that right side? Oh, nice save. Nice drop pass. It was a real nice save by Beater there. That was, you know, for the Knights coming down, that was Cooper at the zeal that uh, left or right for Marcus Lun Lunsky. As you look out there, Sean Lutz, he's a big size yeah. fellow there. What does he run? They have him listed at 6'2", 190, and real good opportunity, but Beater there right up on the top of his crease and is able to make a nice save and keep this a 0-0 hockey game. All right, 11.50 remaining in the first period, just under three minutes on that five-minute major. Cooper Klaus trying to get that out of the zone, can't. Good job by the Mustangs, keeping this to the periphery. Giving nothing in the center of the ice. Central gonna try this again. Oh, nice stick by Cooper Klaus. Sends that all the way down. Central regroup behind their net. They're gonna try the left-hand side this time. Good job. Good aggressive penalty killing by the Mustangs, the first two and a 
two and a half minutes. We'll get close. Well, good, good opportunity there, and Central's going to go for a penalty. I believe that was is that Mason Christensen that was all the way up yeah. there with Cooper Close. And I was checking the numbers. <laughs> I was like, what is going? Is that twenty? Yeah. Is that twenty? I thought it was Sean. One of the things I was going to say is our, our next break. Uh, yep. You know, I'm talk about goaltending. You talk about goaltending. Central's got two good ones. Jaden Beater had his had a shutout in Grafton, and then up at Fargo North the other day only gives up one goal. And yeah. You know, giving up one goal, you keep your team in the game and give him an opportunity and so you know he's he's done a fine job as well yep you were under the weather it was uh cheyenne against yes South. yes about five minutes in boom 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 we were down three nothing and uh the goaltending change was made and beater has uh kept his uh kept himself in in the crease with some solid goaltending the last well, four games if I'm not mistaken. A this couple is, times here. This is fourth one. I believe so. There's been a couple times here where Central's tried to bring the puck up the zone and they've just been stripped by it by, you know, Cheyenne. When you're on the power play, that's not one of the things you want to do is try to go through guys. Obviously, well, actually, they're four on four now, Sean. I yeah. forgot, so I better be quiet, all right? You got to you gotta help me out on those there, buddy. <laughs> no, I was watching numbers, not the, <laughs> not the clock. Sorry, my friend. All right, there is 1.32 remaining on our five-minute and 125 remaining on two minute minor to central. So they're pretty much gonna nullify one another. Seven second over there. All right. Cheyenne unable to keep that in the, in the zone. Looked like that was, should have been icing, but I'm not sure. Jane, we could have played that one. Good pass by Madden Weber. Get that quickly to Cy Hassler. Uh, so go unable to get anything going. Good stick by Cooper Klaus again. Good forechecking. In yeah, the neutral zone and in the defensive zone here. So effective first period so far. Shots are only three to two, so well done. With the hottest team probably in the in the state. All right. That's Weber. Couldn't find anyone just able to keep that in the zone. Cooper Klaus. At the end of a long shift right here, it looks to be. Central able to get this up the boards. First one's on it, though, the Mustangs. Cooper Klaus again on this left-hand side. Short pass. Shot blocked. Okay. Nice little no-look pass there. Oh, we had room to skate there. We had we had four central guys that collapsed right around the net. Allow, allowing that was Madden Weber, I think. Yes, it was. Way down low to, yep. to get yeah. a decent shot off. <coughs> All right, that puck is definitely out on that one. Yeah, it was Pitts that's out there. Uh, and he was pressuring that uh, <laughs> central forward up and out of the zone, so good job by, by Jack Pitts there. <coughs> Both teams are going to go back to five on five play here. So for Cheyenne, you know, obviously they were aided by Central taking that penalty, but that five minute there, they don't yield anything on it. So you know, they had a big five on three up at the Coliseum there tonight too that they killed off. So penalty killing has, has been uh, good for them. I, unfortunately, the goal that North scored was when Cheyenne was actually on the power play. So yeah. specialty teams has, has been good on one side, but you never want to give up a, a shorthanded goal. And I don't know how many of the uh, Mustang games you've been able to see our viewers that may be tuned into this, but uh, we've been competitive in, in every single game. It's just been uh, just some, un, I'm going to say, untimely errors maybe. Yeah. Uh, we gave up, in two games, we gave up uh, shorthanded goals at critical, critical moments. Uh, last one just two nights ago, 0-0 zero, zero score going into the third, and uh, yeah, I gave a shorthanded goal, which proved to be the game winner. All right, we got 7.58 remaining in this first period. Cheyenne out shooting center, three to two. All right, that was Kale Kwame. We're gonna get that puck out. Sean, uh, we could we could certainly go back and be you know after this and watch and be corrected. Yeah. I don't know if Central registered a shot on that power play. Can you think of any good opportunities that they had? You no, know, was, we, was we the were, one was they the one they were stifled at our line on, on numerous occasions here. Well, I'm trying to think now. Was the one that Lunsky had? Was that on the power play or was that one oh, both teams know. were even strength? But I mean, I was. 
Oh, for sure that was. Oh, Lashovsky looking, doing a nice job of hanging onto that puck. Can't see who it was. He's trying to go back door too, but nice, good patience there. All right. There we go. Lashovsky again, look at head man that puck cut off by central at center ice. So Rogan in, take a look. He finds his. Christensen. Keep it close. Oh, oh, there it is. Jeepers creep. Took a look and ripped it. And I hope we have that on replay because, folks, this is on the far end of the ice from us. And it looked like he did nothing to shoot at at all. And he somehow put it right over it the goal. It looked to be from our vantage point about one foot from the goal line. Took a look up. And that's not an easy shot either for a left-hander to make because the angle's really not on your side. If you're a right-hander going down there, you get the whole thing in front of you. Lefty, it's, it's kind of on your back there. And he must have had a size of a coffee cup to hit, and he absolutely hit it. So <laughs> you talk about it, trying to create offense in different ways and score more goals. And Cooper Klaus must have hurt us and took it personal, Mr. Nice Burke, because job, he got yeah. those things up to a one nothing lead. <laughs> there we go. Uh, so... Uh, I don't know if you love the Winnipeg Jets like I love the Winnipeg Jets. So they played the Kings. Uh, I had to stay up late back-to-back -back nights this week. Uh, <laughs> same thing happened against Hellebuck. Below the goal line, it looked like the, <laughs> the player played it off his helmet. <laughs> and it hit his helmet and, and went in. It was just like stunned. <laughs> the fans, Hellebuck, and eerily similar from the same side, but maybe not as deep, but brilliant shot by Cooper Klaus. <coughs> Cheyenne able to grab. A fairly early one, nothing lead. And uh, if we had done the keys to the game, is one of them would have been to not fall behind this central team, especially uh, the way we've been struggling, get, come getting goals and, and them not giving up any. Oh, off the ref's hand there. Ouch. Yeah, it was so, off, off the defense and then right yeah, off the ref's hand. Oh, he's feeling that. I feel that. All right. Uh, Price pays a tough game. Good job. Oh, give him a little bit of business to Cooper Klaus. Good hit. Who was that? 17. Trey Klaus and on Cooper Klaus just inside his own zone. Mustangs doing a good job, though, of hanging on to the puck and making sure that someone is in position before they give it up and not just throw it away. And crucial when you got a team like... There's they another one looks like it was out again. I thought for was, sure that was open. Yeah. We're a long way away. Yeah, I'm the one wearing glasses, so... Yeah. I hear. All right. 5.05 remaining in this first period. Mustangs, one nothing. Yeah, you heard that right. Against Central. Shot 6-2 to two at this point. All right, good job. Nice hustle by the... Mustang forward there to keep that in. All right, Central looks like uh, looks like Kwame back there. Central coming up this way. Oh, nice job. Four Mustangs collapsing in the house there, not giving Central anything to shoot at. Applying the body, very. Aside from that <laughs> major penalty, very disciplined first period so far on the Mustangs. And that was one of the keys to the game, fans. If we <laughs> would have done that pregame show, you would have heard us talk about it. Uh, when you get a good offensive team that rolls into your uh, rink like this, you don't want to give them more opportunities on the power play than you should. And you want to have a good defense, defensive zone structure, and so far, you know, Cheyenne's really limited their opportunities. Yep. All right. Central coming up on that right-hand side. And again, right there, you don't know, get back check by Mason Christensen. Yep. Oh. It makes that play difficult. Nice move. Who was that? That's Cooper DeZeal. Gave me a little bit too much space there after we uh, were singing the praises of our uh, defensive coverage there. Does yeah, but they've got good players on Central, and, and, and uh, you know, obviously I don't expect that they're going to have three shots through 14 minutes you know, yeah. in each period here. So you know, they're going to get their opportunities and maybe taking them maybe a little bit uh, longer so far through this period than they would like to get going. But you know, if, I, if I was a betting man, Sean, I mean, they're going to get their opportunities. All right, we got number one line against number one line. Goal for Cheyenne right. is just to try to limit those opportunities to as few as they possibly can. Linky, that's the Klaus on this left-hand side. Oh, oh. glorious opportunity on that right-hand side. Oh, net wide open on that side for Lashovsky. Just couldn't handle that. 
Man, 2 nothing. that would have been sweet at this juncture. A lot of room out here on this left-hand side for Cooper Claus. Two on one. Here we go. Oh, he likes to shoot. Blocker save. Yeah, going all the way back. So three good opportunities there for the Mustang. On the first one, Cooper Kulz just made a nice move going from the outside to the inside around the defenseman. Uh, took a shot, and Mashovsky was unable to get anything uh, as far as a rebound. And then Mashovsky had another opportunity where he wasn't able to corral a rebound there. And then on the last one, there we see Klaus come down. Defenseman slid, so Klaus elected to shoot it. And he's got the hot hands. So yeah. <laughs> not going to fault him for it. That was good yeah. patience by uh, Diedrich on there. Yeah. Not moving until uh, Cooper Klaus had uh, decided that he was going to shoot. So well done. All right. Mustangs control on the faceoff. Pass back to the point. A lot of, lot of traffic in front. That's good. Mad That's scramble there. Those are the things Central I think that Central just needs to content do. To, to get that out of the zone to center ice and relieve the pressure here. Good job by the Mustangs on this one. Got a third line out there, Keen Hanestad. Shot from the point. Oh, blocked. We got Madden Weber. No. Oh. So on that last flurry there, Sean, I think Central blocked four shots I counted. And that was one of the things that we talked about at that game at Fargo North. And I, I think unofficially I went back and watched it. And just unofficial numbers, there was probably some that I missed. But I counted 16 blocked shots at North Haddon. And we talked about getting pucks to the net and getting opportunities and things like that as we've seen Cheyenne is in 10 shots right now and obviously four in the last couple minutes here. But you know, making sure that your shots are getting through. Oh, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't even have to be on net, but if you... You know, if you can at least get it past that first wave and then let your forwards go work down. Yeah, that North team was not that big, but big on heart and the sacrifice yes. in the body on so many occasions. Yeah, it was uh, it was impressive to watch. Would have preferred a win, but uh, hey, give them their give them their dues. It was a well earned one nothing victory. All right, shot from well out handed handled easily by Dietrich on that play. Yeah, and sometimes when you think about blocking a shot, it's not. I think sometimes you think, well, you know, going down on an ear slide, I mean, it's mm -hmm. even just, you know, what's your gap like? Can you get a stick on it? Can you deflect it? You know, all those sorts of things, too. So, yeah, North did a real good job of it, and, and uh, Central's done a nice job of it so far. Right. I think probably a uh, number of grade-A chances probably on one hand in that North game. Uh, yeah. It was uh, tough sledding to get anything, uh, any, any clean opportunities there. All right. Just over two minutes remaining in this first period. Mustangs doing a fantastic job of keeping Central hemmed in in their own zone. Shots are 11 to 3. Oh, good job at the point there. Oh, no, that one say that. There we go. So <laughs> that one looked closer than the other, That's other two that we were questioning. Thing. All right, Cooper Claus coming on this right hand side here. He's got good speed. Oh, good save by Dietrich. But big rebound, though. That was a nice job by Lunsky to get that puck out of there in a hurry. But Mustangs are not done. Oh, that one's going to be, have to tag up there now. Yeah, Coach Benson from Cheyenne did a little uh, shuffling of his lines. And yeah. He put Lashofsky, Meyer, and Klaus together. And so far through one period, he's got to be really liking what he sees in the production uh, that they've had. Obviously, Klaus is the goal scorer, and you've said his name, I'd say, probably almost a dozen times so far through he this He's logged in some heavy minutes. Yes, he is. In <laughs> his first period. You know, it was one of the things at the North game. I think they were trying to get him out there as, as much as they possibly could. They were playing with some different lines. He was double shifting. Uh, I know there was uh, one time he was out there with different sets of, of, not more than one time, but multiple times he was out there with you know, different sets of wingers and, and trying to utilize his skill set uh, for Cheyenne the most that they possibly can. All right. Looks like we've got the Keen Hennestead line out there. And that scramble at the point. Shot for the point. Oh, didn't know if he could see that. Nice low hard shot. That was Glinky on that play. That was a nice job of Jackson to get that, that puck through right there. Jackson's got a good hard shot and keeps it low and <clears throat> right on the pads of Diedrich and creates a rebound and, and a second opportunity. I don't know if I've just been watching more hockey this year, but I love from, from the points where they, the defensemen are making eye contact with the forwards and that slap pass, kind of shot, heavy, uh, on the ice. It just looks very pretty. And, uh, and uh, you know, okay. Mr. Glinky had been watching that too. It was nice and low, but uh, would have preferred it on the opposite side and back door there. But well done there. Did get through. All right. Just under one minute to go in this first period. Shots 13 3 for the Mustangs. All right. 
That's Tree. Koontz looking to get something going, trying to get it out of the zone for Central. Nice job at the point. Kept in. All right. Mustang's looking a little give and go below the net. Puck squirts to him. Puck is free. Oh, scramble. We can't see it. It's and blew the whistle, so oh. that was close. They came out of the corner there and put a backhander right on that. And you can see the shots to point right there. Like he doesn't have, never had the puck covered. Looks like Blinky's going to be adamant about it as well. There's no way that Sean, you or I could have seen that from all the way down here with all the bodies that were yeah. in front. But some of these Cheyenne players feel very strongly. As that's no surprise that they would, yeah. right? I mean, <coughs> yeah, it was a good opportunity. Still, good, good opportunity again by the, that trio of forwards in, in the Meyer, Close, and Mashovsky. So, yeah, I'm guessing the only thing you'd be saying is, hey, come on, that puck's live. But, you know, anytime you lose sight of it, I think yeah. you got you to be able to see. And it looks like uh, Dietrich may be stretching uh, his, his quads, quads or his hamstrings out there. I don't know if someone fell on him there. There was about four or five players in and around him, so we'll have to keep an eye on that, see if uh, he might have tweaked something in that. And that scrum. Oh. Had a, I'm not sure who that was with bad intentions for the Mustangs. I had the central defense lined up. All right. Oh, nice. Nice stick by central. Five seconds remaining in this first period. Mustangs going to be content to just keep that puck in the zone. Well, I don't know if it was their most solid period, but it was darn close. Well, it gets their opponent too, and Central comes in here, and they're second in the EDC with nine points, and the rest of the EDC is idle tonight. So if Central were to, you know, somehow pick up three, they'd be tied at Red River for first. So I think given your opponent, you know, them coming to your building, uh, <coughs> this is about as, as good as Cheyenne of a period I think they, that they could have wanted. They they checked some boxes, they scored first. Uh, they were very good in the offensive zone. Didn't really have to play a lot in their defensive no. zone this period. You know, outside of that penalty, which. You know, we're talking about checking boxes, and they, they killed off it was a three minutes of that five-minute uh, major to Dylan yep. Johnson. So, you know, checking some boxes off early. I thought they did did some nice things. They're moving the puck really well. One thing I want to see in the second period and third period, though, Sean, is I think they got to have a little bit more depth. they got to have, you know, more guys. It can't just be Paulus Meyer and the Shofsky, and they were really good that period. You know, let's see if maybe like that second and third unit, if they can start to create some of those right. chances as well. Right. Yeah, because a lot of energy was expended. Uh, it's just in that first line, like you said, uh, we said that Cooper Falls line was out there a ton in that uh, in that first period. Yes, they were. Yeah, good job too. Um, yeah, you know, we talked about you know killing that penalty. So special teams there. Uh, Cheyenne didn't have an opportunity on the power play there, but you know, good job. Other than that one hit, I thought it was a fairly clean period. You know, you had one penalty both ways, the major on Cheyenne, and then there was a trip on on Grand Forks Central. But other than that, just looks like two teams that are playing really hard on a Friday night. Just like, you know, when you're playing Red River and Central, I, I, you know, if I'm the coach, I'm saying, hey, we have got to eliminate time and space yeah. with these guys. You know, they just, Grand Forks is not that big. These kids have probably played together a dozen years, some of them maybe. It, it's just yeah. like it, it is so fluid, so nice to watch. Uh, the, the chemistry is there. That's yes, for sure. Yeah. 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 So with that, we will take a short break, and then we'll rejoin you for second period action from the West Fargo Sports Arena. Hi, I'm Micah and I work at Marvin. I've been in the military for eight years. I was a preventive medicine technician in the U.S. Navy. And so that translated over to working at Marvin and how can safety help make Marvin a better company. The culture of working at Marvin is probably the best one I've worked with other than being in the military. Working together and caring about each other. You feel like you're part of the family at Marvin. Come work with me at Marvin. It's a great place to work. Hi, I'm TJ Yoshi here at Marvin Headquarters in Warroad, Minnesota. Let's check it out. Warroad is the small town way of life, right on Lake of the Woods. Some of the best fishing in the world. I think what makes us so unique here is within 15 minutes of me leaving work, I can be out on the lake, I can be on the golf course, I can be on the bike path, I can be out in the Beltrami Island State Forest. Just a fantastic way to grow up and to live life. Hi, I'm Nick and I work at Marvin. So my team implements um, technology in manufacturing. So I quickly became really impressed with manufacturing as a setting for engineering. For an engineer, it's kind of a playground. Um, here at Marvin, specifically in the signature group, like we are in Grafton, it is high volume, high option. 
meaning you have to make a lot of product, but it's always different. I, I never expected finding a great job like this kind of out here in a small town. Come work at Marvin. It's a great place to work. Hi, I'm Gabby and I work at Marvin. When I first started at Marvin, I was a production associate and I was shocked at how bright the floor was, how clean it was. It can be a very fast paced environment, but it can also be very fun. I feel great about the growth opportunities at Marvin, especially because I started as a production associate and then worked my way into being an HR coordinator. If you're interested in working in manufacturing or you've never worked in a manufacturing environment before, I would definitely say come try it out. It might surprise you. It can be very fun and rewarding. Here, when your future lies ahead, we help set you on the right course. When your whole world is about to change, we help you prepare for your new life. When staying healthy means staying informed, we help you find answers. This is perseverance, understanding, connection. These are remarkable people doing remarkable things together. Manufacturing, it's not for the faint of heart. It's not sitting down, doing nothing, just flipping out a couple pieces of wood each day. We are building tomorrow's windows. We all know that each unit that we build makes a difference, not just for the customer, not just for the company, but for each other as well. In this place, we face obstacles like nowhere else. The clock, the trail, the hill, the challenge that's always waiting. When that challenge comes, we'll meet it together. Because this, it's your chance to show what you're made of. Tenacity, resilience, and the power to prove that the toughest competition comes from within. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. <laughs> What does it take to make fitness part of your lifestyle? It's intention. It's commitment. It's resilience. It's just who you are. You put in the time and effort to stay active. Our expert orthopedic and sports medicine providers also put in the time and effort to invest in new methods and treatments. Whatever you do to stay active, we are here to keep you moving. It's just who we are. Orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. Hi, I'm Christian and I work at Marvin. My military background is the basis of who I am. I was looking for something to help me be the Marine who wasn't a Marine anymore. Belonging to Marvin feels like I'm part of something. I know that being with Marvin means I'm making a difference in every homeowner's life because of the windows, skylights, and doors that I'm helping to build. Come work with me at Marvin. I think you'll enjoy it. Here, when our path takes an unexpected turn, we keep moving forward. When life sends us a message, we listen. When you're determined to beat the odds, we help you plan for what's next. This is commitment, resourcefulness, determination. These are remarkable people doing remarkable things together. I'm Diana, and I work at Marvin. Working in manufacturing, not a lot of sitting, so it just uh, makes your day go by faster. Belonging to Marvin makes me feel stable. 25 years, 
My kids were little when I started here in Grafton. Now I have a daughter that works here. She was one of the ones that pushed me to become the lead, pushed me to be the person that I am now. And I just see myself retiring here. If you're looking for an awesome place to work, come join me at Marvin. I'm Kylie and I work at Marvin. The training I received when starting at Marvin was very in-depth. When I moved to Marvin's new facility in Fargo, I was kind of nervous about the new machines that I was going to have to be working with, but I was also very excited because this robot that I get to work with is the coolest thing I've ever done. I love the people that I work with. Belonging to Marvin feels like a second home, somewhere that you can just kind of go to, not super stressful, you can enjoy your day and you can laugh. Come work with me at Marvin, we're an amazing team. I'm Joni and I work at Marvin. So when I first started, my training was very extensive. I was able to advance fairly quickly within Marvin. And it's just a matter of telling people that you're interested and really applying yourself. Belonging to Marvin feels like you're part of something. So it's more than just a job for me, it's a career. And it's been a really exciting journey for me. Hi, I'm TJ Yoshi here at Marvin Headquarters in Warrow, Minnesota. The Lake Town way of life is appealing to so many people. We've got a thriving school system, coffee shops, breweries, restaurants, and hockey is the hub of our community. We're probably the last place left in Minnesota where hockey is actually free. The way Marvin supports the town, the town supports Marvin is awesome. There's opportunities for you, work hard, self-educate. The sky's the limit here at Marvin. I'm Kyle and I'm a trainer at Marvin. I work on the night shifts because it works with my schedule. When I first started at Marvin, I started in the forklift department. I was there for three months and I saw an opportunity for a new position. I've never been at a company that has made me feel like they actually do care about my career and my career development. I've just had jobs in the past and I really feel like this is the first time I'm actually in a career. Come join me on the evening shift at Marvin. It's a great team and you'll have a lot of fun. Our health. 
It's what keeps us doing what we love. It keeps our community strong. So how are you doing? There's no easier way to take care of yourself than checking in with us, your primary care team at Essentia Health. In person or online, we offer scheduling and appointment options that fit your life. We'll care for you today and keep an eye on things for the future and, if needed, get you back on track. So take some time to connect with us because it's always good to check in. Hi, I'm Micah and I work at Marvin. I've been in the military for eight years. I was a preventive medicine technician in the U.S. Navy and so that trans All right, fans, welcome back to West Florida Sports Unit, where we're just about to drop the puck on period number two here. And Sean, nice first period we we had there, and uh, one of the things here we want to see out of Cheyenne is we want to see if, if they can even elevate their play here in the second. That's right. It was just what Santa ordered. One nothing. All right, puck is dropped. Oh, Cheyenne just trying to establish possession there, but could the cost maybe tired already? Had a little spill it center, but back to him. Oh, nice pass. Good job by center collapsing on him though. That was Wyatt Blake making sure that Cooper Cross did not pot his second of the game. All right, Central looking to establish something here below the goal line. Cheyenne though with three, three bodies, making sure nothing uh, squirts out here. Good job. Let's go figure that's Cooper Klaus digging that puck out. All right, no icing on the play here. Reverse by Central. Chip up the boards. Cut off by Cheyenne, but just hopped over a stick. That was Chris Meyer. All right, nice back. Oh, I was just about to say nice backhanded pass, but read beautifully by, by Central. All right. So, okay. Good shot there by Cheyenne. Oh, Central guy run over. All right, Central coming up on this right hand side. That was Marcus Lunsky with a shot from way out though. That was easily by Beater. I haven't had to say the name. I almost forgot who was in that. Yeah, uh, he for a second was, there. was not as busy in the first period as he maybe would have expected or, or maybe that right. he wasn't. And in they the always allude to that in the NHL. It's like, oh, I haven't faced a shot eight minutes. You know, and, and it's tough, I guess, mentally and physically, is that they say yeah, the goalies want to be getting more shots and less shots. Yeah, it keeps you in the game and it also keeps you, keeps you more sharp mentally and more focused. And, and uh, you see sometimes where a team might dominate in the offensive zone for you know, four or five consecutive right. shifts and a team comes down, throws a clunker, and, and you know, by the goalie. And you know kids these days, their attention span is about five seconds. I'm sure a goalie is no different. So, uh, yeah, you got to be mentally focused. Have you ever seen uh, Connor Hellebuck in his warm-ups with I, his eyes and that? Yeah. It is crazy. And I, and, I, and I don't know at the high school level the preparation that goes in, but, uh, but at that NHL level, it's... Wow, it is impressive of, of uh, tracking pucks and uh, probably what they do. Yeah, I can't, I can't speak for, for uh, Beater himself, but I'm yeah. sure there's probably a lot of you know, tennis balls and, yeah. ju and juggling and yeah. juggling balls off of the wall and doing those sorts of things to just get your hands yeah. prepared and get your eyes focused. Yeah. All right, here, 50 minutes exactly remaining in this second period. Puck played behind the net by Beater. Try and looking to get it. Oh, good job. Getting this out. Oh, shot just tipped wide. I couldn't tell if that was off of Cheyenne or Central. Cheyenne needing a change. Just toss that into the into the screens. So officially on that goal in the first period, that was Klaus that scored, and then the assists are going to go to Colton Rogan and Mason Christensen. There we go. So on, on the year for Klaus, that is going to be his uh, third goal of the season. Oh, good You're gonna job there. I was looking down to see how yeah, many goals so he I, had, and I me, heard the whistle. I'm looking at my sheet, too. Rusty, it's been three weeks, it, my friend. It, it has, like, yeah. Trying to get back into it here. I know. I should be practicing on the NHL games I'm watching, maybe, just to have the ball <laughs> down. <laughs> do something. All right, nice job on the, on the faceoff by Cheyenne. We're controlling it in the neutral zone here. Coming up on the left-hand side. Oh, wow, that was... Uh, once again. Almost took out our photographer. Uh, I know, there. Cooper Klaus. Puck went up and over the netting and then ended up coming down. And it was a kind of no look. Right on top of her. Looked like he was going to pass that and uh, just whistled it. Uh, 
All right. I don't think they're leaving the ice our number yeah, one unit. Meyer, Klaus, Nashoski again. Well, I have the same thing for Central though. Trying to get back in this game. Got the Panzer Blue walking through this line. All right. Central controls it just inside the blue line there. Oh, nice give and go there by Central. Good save by Beater. Turn that wide. Oh, nice block there. Can tell who that was. Weber. Yeah, nice, nice block there. Yeah. A little more shots, a little more action in the Cheyenne zone starting the second period, but it's kind of like what we expected. You know, there's going to be a pushback. Oh, nice job. Oh. Cooper Klaus, Klaus opportunistic right at the line. I don't know right. if he hopped over his stick, coming into a speed. Yeah, he was able to get a good shot off. You know, fortunately, he wasn't able to create a whole lot of separation from the central defender there, so he had to fire it. And, and Washburn, or uh, Diedrich, excuse me, was right on top of his crease and you know, cut down on his angles. All right, central with the Klaassen line right there. We are countering with our third line of the, well, two thirds of our, right, Dylan Johnson is. So he's out of the penalty box, that looks like that. Is that Estebo, 23, that's yeah. out there right now, I believe? Yeah. Charlie? Charlie. Playing forward. Yeah. Switching up. I like that. All right. Ooh. Still oh, got yeah. a little stick high. Stick high, there. yeah. I think it was going to say that. Oh, bodies are flying now. Shine looking to bring this back in. Oh, just a little more space on that right-hand side. On him like a cheap suit there. Good job. <laughs> nice defensive work there. What was it? No, it was Estebo. Nice job. Well, yeah, I guess he's got the defensive tendencies. Dylan he was there. Was yeah. Having a hard time getting the puck out of his own. They were kind of all over him. Creating some havoc there. Got near the blue line and, and Gunnar Endres is right on Reminds me like about a, a young Kenny Lindsman there. Just a nuisance. All right, uh, we're going to warn you right now, get your pencil and paper, because we're going to go to the A to Z uh, hockey slang term. A little quizzing for, our, for my man here in a little bit when we got a little, little downtime. So uh, grab your pencil and paper. Play along at home. All right, 12.48 remaining in the second period. I think what Cheyenne's doing is they're just going every other uh, yeah. with their forward lines here, because this, this unit here has been out there for... I think it's already four shifts, I think, in this second period. All right, Lockwood looking to bring this up out of his own zone there. Just maybe right there, right? Oh. Oh, we're going to call Meyer on that one right there. He really hard hit there on Donovan. Late, I didn't tell. Uh, uh, nope. A little word for exchange here, I see. Just, just take, your, take your medicine. Yeah, they're wondering what they were going to call in the first period on the one in Johnson. But Referees are going to confer here again and decide uh, what they're going to assess Meyer with. Certainly, what, uh, Central, excuse me, certainly they on five. They're going to go for a two for interference. Okay. I don't know if there's going to be much debate or much discussion about that. All I saw was a player lying on the ice in that one. Well, looks like no argument from Coach Paranica from Central, him and his staff. So we're going to get playing here. All right, 12 32 remaining in the second period. Cheyenne. Still with that one nothing lead. Shots margin has been narrowed. 17 to 9 now. Yeah, this for the has Mustangs. Been a much stronger period for, yeah. for Central. We've done a but che Cheyenne's done a nice job too as yep. well. They've had their chances yep. offensively. So this one's been a little bit more back and forth, where I think in the first Cheyenne had much better to play. The uh face off uh has definitely been tilted in our favor here. I know it's which which oh. you know, you know oh uh, Buck scored just through the zone. Luckily there was no central player within shooting distance there. Get down on one knee there. Fire that one. Handled by Dieter. That's Mac Blue on the got him on the point on this power play. Looking on that left side looking for Kwame. That's Lockwood. And give and go. No look. Read nicely by Mustang serving a little Rag this up, get a little bit of clock. Got a little space there. And go figure, it's Cooper Klaus again. Good job. Just under one minute remaining on this power play for Central. Spin move at the, at the line, looking for help. Nice. 
Wasn't buying it. Good job by, oh, oh, almost a two on one for the Mustangs there. Good job, good hustle. What was that, Lashowski? Lashowski, yep. Good job. He's one of the more fleet of foot forwards that yep. Cheyenne has, and he oh. proved it right there. As you were saying, good stick there by Mustangs. It's Lashowski again. And again there, nice Rogan. Shift. Rogan has a good stick right there, and it knocks the puck right off of the central player stick, and Weber picks it up and sends it all the way down. So Just over 20 seconds remaining. They get time for one more rush, maybe. When we talk about discipline and things like that, it's having your sticks in good positions and making it difficult to, on your opposition. All right, drop pass on this right-hand side. Little look from behind the net. Nothing doing. Good job, Mustangs, keeping them on the periphery. And nice stick to, to break this out. Mustangs are going to bring us up on this right-hand side, and it's off a stick. And speaking uh, of sticks, into the cage. Wyatt Blake there, got a stick right on. Blinky shot, and sends it up and into the netting. All right, here we go. So I'm going to say this is where we left off sort of thing. I need the term to describe an outstanding deek, my friend. you got to tell me the letter it starts with. It starts with a D. An outstanding deek uh -huh. starts with a D. Yes, sir. It's been used by yours truly. When you tell me, it, I'm going to say, oh, how did I think of that? But I can't think of anything. Uh, we're going with dirty. Oh, the yeah, term yes. is dirty, my friend. All right. Play just underway. 10 20 remaining in this second period. Central is content to dump that low and chase it. Good speed coming. Can tell who that is. It looks like uh, Balak. Oh, Mustangs read that. Able to clear it. Talk about a guy filling up the frame, defenseman 22 for Grand Forks. Yes, 6'4". Committed to play football at UND, and yeah. it certainly looks like he's got the size to grow yeah. into a Division I football player. Looks like sure. our biggest guy in the ASL 24. 22. 22. 6'4", 230. Yes, sir. Kind of giving you a... Yeah. Some difficulty there. Yeah, sure we're going we're gonna to go... Uh, we're going to take you both off. A little spirited joust at center ice there. That's going to be A.J. Spicer, too, with the boxes and goal for interference. So this is the first time that Cheyenne is going to have an opportunity to get onto the power play here. Oh, wow. Good uh, discipline. Nice crowd here tonight, Sean. Is that yes, sir. It's filling up. Some of the Cheyenne faithful were, were cheering for the Mustangs as they're getting their power play opportunity here and look out. Last not Friday. Not a lot of seats we found. No. Uh, Still room though if you're thinking of coming. Yeah, I know a guy outside, so just ask for uh, Mikey. <laughs> All right. All right. Power play just underway. All right, Cheyenne looking to get possession here. And we do. That's Cy Hassler. Oh, Central all over us at the line though. They're gonna break this out and they do. Oh, nice. I look, oh, that was a slash, but not calling that one. All right, let's see how the Mustangs do on this power play. Central aggressive floor checking here. Having us in. Yeah, and this is where Cheyenne got, unfortunately, where they gave their goal up against yeah. North the other day, so you still got to uh, maintain your level of sharpness here. Right, not a clean get at center ice there. That's was that Iverson? Yeah, it was Iverson. Yeah, it was he's, Iverson and he's not happy with himself. Trying to get that. Blake tried to get out of his own, went up and in the glass and into the netting. So that's, I think, maybe the third or fourth time we've had that happen in this, yeah. this period down in this end. So might have to yeah. tighten those nets down there. A lot of these pucks are going off the gas and going up in there. All right. On this power play for Cheyenne. We've got Estebo taking, taking the draw. draw. Yeah. Yes. Lashewski and Klaus. And Meyer and Weber up top. All right, Weber looking to get this out. Ooh, we had two guys closing in on there. But not a lot of space. Yeah, very aggressive forecheck. All right, 51 seconds remaining on his top. Oh, you can see that. Yeah, it's just like, oh, here we go. Oh, back door open. Oh, my goodness. That was a glorious opportunity for Trace Meyer. That would have been a huge goal. All right, Cheyenne though, able to main possession though. That's Meyer, nice spin move. Create some distance here. Not much, oh, back door again, shot! Oh, over top the net, Klaus. Looking for his second. 
Mustangs are buzzing. Good job keeping it in the point. Nice move at the line. Back door again, one timer. Whistled by Meyer. Over top that net, relentless pressure here. 11 seconds remaining on the power play. Oh, tipped in front, he scores! Yes! Lashowski, oh! If they weren't gonna score on that power play, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was ever gonna get to two goals for Cheyenne because you had opportunities by oh Meyer my two goodness. times over. You had Klaus and then finally the shot. This place is electric. Yes, absolutely. Wow, that is by far the best power play I've seen in our three years here. Yeah, they were, and they had some trouble getting it out of their zone too. And so it took yeah. a little bit, took a little while, excuse me, to materialize. Right. And then once they got it down into this zone, they were moving it around. And you know, we're sitting up top here, and you could see some of the plays that they were making, the pass over to Klaus, and and so you could see what their thinking was. And and they're rewarded for it for their good hard work. And Charlie Vashovsky is going to get that. Yeah, goal. some glorious looks. Uh, a couple over the net, but yeah, found pay dirt, and we're not. Taking the foot off the gas right here. 7.26 remaining. 2 nothing, Cheyenne. All right. We've got ourselves a game. All right. Central looking to get this. That was out of the ice surface and not on the call again. We need to get down there. What is happening? There better not be a goal here because that was clearly in our bench. All yeah, right. I didn't see it, Sean. I was writing something down on my Sorry, seven here, so. minutes remaining. It, the puck was clearly uh, out of the playing surface and uh, by our, interfered with by us, I think, and then, but shot in by Central, so shot. Oh, good. Right on net. All right. Aggressively played by Diedrich. We're going to get that to his defensive pairing. Mustangs. Oh, the second time he's lost an edge, is that? Yeah, that's Cooper Klaus. Look at those skates. <laughs> skates are probably skater. dull from being out there so much. <laughs> They're probably sharp as heck to start the game, but. Uh, I, uh, yeah, he's got to be at 15 minutes already. Just I hope we have. Second, second hope period. all those guys have heart monitors or you know, <sighs> Apple watches on you know, from that unit. They've, oh. you know, they, and what they've got the two goals for Cheyenne. Yeah. So uh, if, if you're going to be rewarded yeah. with that much ice yeah. time, you better produce, right? Right, absolutely. All right. Oh, good job of the defense. And we got a central player behind. Uh, that was Beater. That was scary right. looking. Now, I, I couldn't tell where the puck was if, if he had it or not. Here we go. End. I think that was Panzer that came in with the opportunity right in front. Yeah. Fortunately, I think it was just happened just prior to that, so we don't see it. Yeah, Glinky was a almost step behind. Like, oh, boy. It looked from down here like he was going to have a wide open yeah. to shoot at. And Somehow, some way, it stays out of the back of the net. That's good. 5.56 remaining in the second period. 2 nothing. Cheyenne over Central. He just tuned in. All right. Central with the Panzer line. I'm going to say uh, we're going to counter with uh, the Cooper Close line, but can't tell from this far back. No, I believe that's Hannes that taking that. There we go. Okay. Read the numbers from all the way down here. There we go. Clean win by Central. One timer. Did not get through the beater though. We got a jump ball here. Nope, no, no call. Oh, that's how it hops over a stick. We got a race floor here at the central line. Oh, and yeah, there's no lineman there. You might as well just pretend that puck did not leave the zone. And there's no whistle. All right, central. We're gonna play this off the glass and into the zone. Oh, did not get all of that on the. Pass, trying to clear the zone. Central able to, clear, able to keep that in, sorry. Mustangs looking to chip this in. That is Hassler. He's coming off the end of the shift though. I'm gonna change it, good job here. You have the central defense without a, without a stick. You need the help. Yeah, there we go, the two guys in there. Nice job reading that situation. Defense and coming down the pinch. Nice job by Keen Hannes to yeah. shift to Worked really hard down low. All right, got two Mustangs. Well, the goal line here. Got a D open. There we go. Pass to the D back. Oh, shot. Good save there. Dietrich saw that one all the way. Get the Klaus. Kind of feather that in. <laughs> back to the point. Cooper Klaus lost it and regained it. From the shot on that. No one there. Oh, big hit. Hello. 
That was Christensen playing, playing low again. Oh, he must have the green light here. Two trains on that track, and yeah. Christensen was the one that stayed on. Nice. All right, Mustangs knifing that in. We can apply pressure here. Ref urging them to play the puck. Nice move there. That was Ryder Burris. The close broke a stick, so that's going to be the only uh, thing that's going to take him off uh, the ice. So, yeah. It's Christmas season, so I better hope uh, one's All under right. the tree. All right, Mustangs, they're going to get this out of the zone. They do. Yeah. Got a center player right on. Winky. Oh, there is defensive mate. That's broken up, though, the central. Chase Meyer, oh, just out of the reach. Gunnar Andres out there in the second unit. All right. Cheyenne, we're going to get this out. Nice. Tilt it in. Oh, central. We've got three guys in the puck here for Mustangs. That right side is going to be open. Oh, nice read on that on that play by Dylan Johnson. That's Jamison Allen. Nice spin move there. Get it to his line mate. Mustangs did a good job of keeping this in. Coming central in. Logan Nielsen there. Able to relieve the pressure, get that out. All good stick there. That was Glinky. And then applied the body after that. Solid. His shift. peers in the student section like that, yeah. as they did the Mason yeah. Christensen play earlier. All right. All three central forwards coming in on this left hand side there. That's good speed. That's number 24. Donovan. Oh, oh nice. Good coverage by uh, Mustangs. So almost give and go at center ice. Keeping the puck low. Good job. Taking some time off that clock. Oh. Make a little bit of hold in the stick there. Yeah, I, I agree with you there looking at the ref on that one. That was Charlie Lashowski going, hey, come on, ref. I'm five feet from you there. He's holding my stick. All right, 158 remaining in a fast second period. Not a lot well, of whistles. If the, if the Mustangs have any more big hits, we're not going to hear about them as loud as Mr. Security Card's going to go down and chide the students. Uh -huh. Counter on the glass. Oh, boy. Game, so. Yeah. He's a stickler for detail, that one. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, another opportunity, kind of like that one we saw maybe yeah. three, four minutes ago. Yeah, landed on the little, goalie's head. A little frustration, Times, yeah, yeah. I think, is maybe setting in on some of these central forwards. They haven't had a, you know, they've had 12 shots. They haven't had, I think, a lot of the great opportunities. And maybe yeah, two to one maybe they thought that nice. they would or maybe that they've had in, in other games. And you know, sometimes you go two periods without scoring a goal or without having a lot of opportunities. And, and that frustration can... I always just talked back in the day, you would grip the stick so hard that the sawdust would come out of it, and obviously that's not, right. the, not the case now, but. We're going with this term, my friend. What's this Apre term? Apre po for today's game. Someone who doesn't get much playing time and collects dust on the bench. Starts with a D. No idea what that could be. Also a uh, type of coat. It is a duster, duster. my friend, I, a duster. Did oh, you know the one? You just, oh, you just yeah, playing? Well, you said I know, it said dust. Part so of it was on there, I know. You <laughs> teed it up uh, for me. I felt bad in the other one. Okay. <laughs> All right. 125 remaining in the second period. Central looking to get on the board. That ah, one just hopped over the stick. Who was that? That was uh, Walkenfoos. Wants that one back. All right. Oh, good stick there by, by Cheyenne again. Looking to go back door. Nope. Broken up nicely by Central. Next break, Sean, and run about a player, okay? All right. Just over a minute remaining. Central looking to bring this up. That looked a little offside. Oh, Peter handled that one nicely. All right, here's your opportunity, my friend. Well, I just, these last two shifts here, one thing that I noticed is Charlie Estival is listed as a sophomore defenseman yep. on that third period, but we've seen him uh, in the second period playing forward. And what a treat is he to watch. Mm -hmm. He's all over the place. He's moving his feet constantly. He's getting, you know, he's a defenseman, but he's getting his opportunity at forward, and he's a sophomore. He's making the most of his opportunity. He's played well physically. He's moved his feet. He's inserted himself into the play. And so when he gets out there, it's kind of like a rejuvenation shot yeah. in the arm for Cheyenne. You know, we've, we've harped and harped about how much this unit that's out there right now has played. But when he's getting his opportunity, he's absolutely taking advantage yeah, of it. Yeah, so good job. That's what you love to see. Oh, so I believe it was the South game. 
he either got the game tying goal or made it three to two. Kind of a harmless Did shot. That was the point. one that I was sick, so I didn't yep. see it. But yeah, so I believe he was credited for that goal. Okay. Joey, big brother, if, uh, call in and let us know if that was uh, little brother getting that first, getting his first goal. Well, he's not watching because he's sitting about 15 oh, feet below he? us. So. <laughs> okay. All All right. College students are back. Oh, what a life that would be. All right, seven seconds remaining in the second period. Cheyenne, two to nothing. Yeah, you heard that right. You want a shot? Two to no oh, yeah, so you needed a righty. Cooper, you needed to uh, switch. Well, Sean, after that first period, you said that was probably probably about you know, the best period that Cheyenne mm -hmm. had. And, and really, we said that's probably you know the best that they they could have played. They checked some boxes. They scored first. Now we see in the second period here. Back-to-back -back solid, solid uh, effort. Yeah. There was not one play where it was like, oh, man, you're out of position. Oh, you know, one, <laughs> one undisciplined penalty. Defensively, they've done a good job, too. I mean, obviously, they've limited Central to 13 shots. Um, a lot of that, though, starts in your offensive zone. By yeah. how hard you cycle and get pucks low and you, you know, you, you get second and third opportunities. If you if the puck's on your stick in the offensive zone, there's no way that. You know, obviously, that's an obvious statement. But you know, a lot of the work that they're doing down in, in this end here is obviously the fans at home can't see that I'm pointing to our offensive zone. But you know, the work, the hard work that they're doing there, uh, it's it's paying dividends. Obviously, the, you know, they got a lead now, you know, two goal lead going into the third period. In the first period, they killed off the penalty. Second period, they score on the power play. So we talk about how important specialty teams can be, and then obviously Beater. Talked about sometimes in a game when you don't have a lot of, a lot of right. shots. That one he had, I believe he had, what did they have after the first? Was it seven? I believe in that one he maybe had six or so saves. We're going to have to, yeah. actually I have the score sheet right here right. so I can, I can pull that up. So maybe I'm off base here, but our game and the effort we played is reminiscent of what we saw North do to us two nights ago. Sticks in the way, hard on the puck, not big, but aggressive. Kind of being that fly in the air. Yes. Right? Just, just a little earlier used the word, I think he used the word irritant. Yeah. And that's, you know, we talked about uh, Charlie Estebo you know, doing things like that. Keen Hanna said that last shift, you know, rags the puck, you know, down below the goal, and it's taken two central nights to, to you know, to get the puck yeah. away from So, yeah, they, they've done some nice things. Now the key is you can't play good for two periods and come out and lay an egg in the third. Right. And so I'm sure that's where Coach Benson and Malali and, and Wilson and, and Archibald, those are the things that they're going to be talking about. Yeah. Those in the locker room the, the Davies game, the North game. I still think of that North game, too, uh, because that last you know, two years ago, and, you know, we saw it. But we're not going to talk about it. Right, right? no. All right. No, so we're not jinxing anyone. With that, we'll take a short break, and then we'll rejoin you for third period action. Hi, I'm Diana and I work at Marvin. Working in manufacturing, not a lot of sitting, so it just uh, makes your day go by faster. Belonging to Marvin makes me feel stable. 25 years, my kids were little when I started here in Grafton. Now I have a daughter that works here. She was one of the ones that pushed me to become the lead, pushed me to be the person that I am now. And I just see myself retiring here. If you're looking for an awesome place to work, come join me at Marvin.
Hi, I'm Gabby and I work at Marvin. When I first started at Marvin, I was a production associate and I was shocked at how bright the floor was, how clean it was. It can be a very fast paced environment, but it can also be very fun. I feel great about the growth opportunities at Marvin, especially because I started as a production associate and then worked my way into being an HR coordinator. If you're interested in working in manufacturing or you've never worked in a manufacturing environment before, I would definitely say come try it out. It might surprise you. It can be very fun and rewarding. In this place, we face obstacles like nowhere else. The clock, the trail, the hill, the challenge that's always waiting. When that challenge comes, we'll meet it together. Because this, it's your chance to show what you're made of. Tenacity, resilience, and the power to prove that the toughest competition comes from within. This is orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. I'm Kyle and I'm a trainer at Marvin. I work on the night shifts because it works with my schedule. When I first started at Marvin, I started in the forklift department. I was there for three months and I saw an opportunity for a new position. I've never been at a company that has made me feel like they actually do care about my career and my career development. I've just had jobs in the past and I really feel like this is the first time like I'm actually in a career. Come join me on the evening shift at Marvin. It's a great team and you'll have a lot of fun. What does it take to make fitness part of your lifestyle? It's intention. It's commitment. It's resilience. It's just who you are. You put in the time and effort to stay active. Our expert orthopedic and sports medicine providers also put in the time and effort to invest in new methods and treatments. Whatever you do to stay active, we are here to keep you moving. It's just who we are. Orthopedics and sports medicine like nowhere else. manufacturing it's not for the faint of heart it's not sitting down doing nothing just flipping out a couple pieces of wood each day we are building tomorrow's windows we all know that each unit that we build makes a difference not just for the customer not just for the company but for each other as well Hi, I'm Christian and I work at Marvin. My military background is the basis of who I am. I was looking for something to help me be the Marine who wasn't a Marine anymore. Belonging to Marvin feels like I'm part of something. I know that being with Marvin means I'm making a difference in every homeowner's life because of the windows, skylights, and doors that I'm helping to build. Come work with me at Marvin. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm Micah and I work at Marvin. I've been in the military for eight years. I was a preventive medicine technician in the U.S. Navy. And so that translated over to working at Marvin and how can safety help make Marvin a better company. The culture of working at Marvin is probably the best one I've worked with other than being in the military. Working together and caring about each other. You feel like you're part of the family at Marvin. Come work with me at Marvin. It's a great place to work. Hi, I'm TJ Yoshi here at Marvin Headquarters in Warroad, Minnesota. Let's check it out. Warroad is a small town way of life, right on Lake of the Woods. Some of the best fishing in the world. I think what makes us so unique here is within 15 minutes of me leaving work, 
I can be out on the lake, I can be on the golf course, I can be on the bike path, I can be out in the Beltrami Island State Forest. Just a fantastic way to grow up and to live life. I'm Kylie and I work at Marvin. The training I received when starting at Marvin was very in-depth. When I moved to Marvin's new facility in Fargo, I was kind of nervous about the new machines that I was going to have to be working with, but I was also very excited because this robot that I get to work with is the coolest thing I've ever done. I love the people that I work with. Belonging to Marvin feels like a second home, somewhere that you can just kind of go to, not super stressful, you can enjoy your day and you can laugh. Come work with me at Marvin, we're an amazing team. Hi, I'm TJ Yoshi here at Marvin Headquarters in Warrow, Minnesota. The Lake Town way of life is appealing to so many people. We've got a thriving school system, coffee shops, breweries, restaurants, and hockey is the hub of our community. We're probably the last place left in Minnesota where hockey is actually free. The way Marvin supports the town, the town supports Marvin is awesome. There's opportunities for you, work hard, self-educate. The sky's the limit here at Marvin. Hi, I'm Nick and I work at Marvin. So my team implements um, technology in manufacturing. So I quickly became really impressed with manufacturing as a setting for engineering. For an engineer, it's kind of a playground. Um, here at Marvin, specifically in the signature group, like we are in Grafton, it is high volume, high option. Meaning you have to make a lot of product, but it's always different. I, I never expected finding a great job like this kind of out here in a small town. Come work at Marvin. It's a great place to work. Our health. It's what keeps us doing what we love. It keeps our community strong. So, how are you doing? There's no easier way to take care of yourself than checking in with us, your primary care team at Essentia Health. In person or online, we offer scheduling and appointment options that fit your life. We'll care for you today and keep an eye on things for the future and, if needed, get you back on track. So take some time to connect with us because it's always good to check in. Hi, I'm Joni. Hi, I'm Micah. And we're at Marvin. How was that hot chocolate? Super duper. That's a good point for a restaurant. Well, initially, it, it required some adding. <laughs> but we're both, we're both struggling here. At least. Can we go back and cut that? <laughs> uh, at least they gave me a packet because it's like, yeah, that looks like brown water. I know that's not going to be good. Yeah, Sean, we'll take some time to thank our sponsors. Hold oh, on. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Mustang Media would like to take a few seconds to remind you that Essentia Health is the premier sponsor of Mustang Media. Essentia Health yeah, they are. is like nowhere else. All right, my friend. I'm going to uh, bring up the term culture. Okay, go ahead. This is a measure of the observable behaviors that your team promotes or accepts. In layman's terms, it's the way we do things around here. Both Grand Forks teams, that culture, it's a winning culture. No, it's been decades now. So we know the pushback is coming. Yep. You know, as good as we played, buckle up. Now, because. <laughs> didn't mean to cut you off there. No. Yeah, oh. Well, for years and years. Central controlled the. So I was looking this up the other day. They had a three feet, 17, 18, 19. Okay. In four years, they won five titles. In 20, they didn't win. 21, they did. So 17, 18, 19, 21. During that three feet, and I'm a social studies teacher, yep. but I double checked and triple checked and, and looked at. They were 76, 1, and 2 <laughs> during that three feet. Oh my God. They went undefeated in 16, 17. They were 27, and 0. In 18, 19, they were 25. That doesn't 0. happen by accident. During that time period, 17, 18, 19. They had 10 Division One players, okay? Yeah, Judd Caulfield played at UND, yep. drafted in the fifth round. Cole Spicer at, du at Duluth right now, drafted by Boston in the fourth round. So they really are kind of the, the, the class, and, and Red you could say Red River's right there with yep. them too. But it's Central this year is looking for that 30th title. So you're right, that pushback is going to come at some point. Now, if you're Cheyenne, the confidence that you have to have is for, for years, Central was kicking on everybody. Yeah. And Cheyenne's last four games against Central, they're 4 0. Two of those wins ended Central season. So if you're Grand Fork Central, you probably want to get uh, on the right side of things here in this third period. All right, let's go. Puck dropped, controlled by Cheyenne in their own zone. Oh, Central bringing it in early. They're going with the one timers. That's uh, on one occasion there. I wonder if it's a 
shoot, shoot, shoot mentality going on here. All right. There he is. Player of the game so far for, for Cheyenne. Cooper Klaus seems to be out there every shift. And warranted. Don't get me wrong here. Oh, good hit. That's, there he is. Cooper Klaus doing it all. Oh, puck. Nice. I don't nice job by Beater. There was some wow, traffic. that was traffic. I was moving, just going to say that, yeah. Yeah, moving right across, and, and Beater does a nice job. Yeah, that was Ryder down. Burns trying to take his vision away from him. One thing that I know is kind of unique uh, for December 15th already. This is the first time out of the greater Grand Forks area that uh, Central's had to go. It looks like they were supposed to play Legacy the 9th of, of December, and must have been a... a must have been bad weather that day. <laughs> I don't think of what day the ninth, the ninth was, but. Ooh, the wind must have been up. <laughs> if they, if they, they didn't go out to business, oh. it had to be a. Oh, did we, did we just dodged a bullet there. So, uh, Colton nice, Rogan, yeah. going for the one-timer to get at that out of the crease, went between his legs, but the central forward was not able to get good wood on that. Peter so. looked really calm, though, in that yeah. and all of it, so that's what yeah. you like to see. Yeah. All right. All right, Central looking to get this in. That's going to be icing. Let's see how you can call that one. Sean, you were talking about culture too earlier. Yep. And, and looking here, I, I was thinking of this when I re remember that we were playing Central race, so I looked it up. And Central won the tennis tournament again this year, and, and you look at their hockey roster, which is not unique at right. all to have a lot of hockey players. And so I'm looking at it, and they played Red River in the team title, and uh, or yeah, in, in uh, for the team title, yep. so it ended in. You're the tennis guy, so yeah. you're going to have to help me. And then they played Red River, and the two Red River players were Esch Espen Schneider and yeah. Kaido Holtberg, uh, uh, two hockey players. Hello. So it's like you see a lot of that. Yeah. Oh, good job by Beater sealing off that point. Oh, oh, my goodness. Puck squirted free. Are you kidding me? Was I, I that. don't know how that. Can you just put it wide there? Wow. I don't know. Christensen was like, Christensen's going, that's not in. It looked oh. like. <laughs> Beater had it covered. I was just about to be really sad up. there. It was, yeah, I'm going to watch. I'm going to watch that again because I don't know how that stayed other than that. All right, the pushback is on, friends. All right, 15, 10 remaining in this third period. Shots 27, 16, and the ice, not surprisingly, has been tilted. Yeah, in the first minute, 55 here. Right. Central's really came out like gangbusters here. You, know, you said the push has been on. You know, Cheyenne's done a nice job so far weathering it, and they're going to have to continue to do that here for most of the rest. But you don't want to go into a shell and say, hey, we got two, now we're going to win 2, two nothing or 2-1. to one. You want to go out and you want to you know, push the pace here and, and continue to grow your lead. All right, Central again with possession. Back to all oh, Miss Handel at the point. That was Dylan Hardestad. Had trouble at, his, at the Cheyenne line. Aerostad, sorry. So good. All right. Mustang player not happy with that being knocked down. Able to get it out there nicely. Key and Hannestad coming up with speed. Oh, nice move. Got three, three central players on him. Shine looking to be in possession below the goal line. Pops out though to central forward. Kept him. Shot in. Opposite corner by the Mustangs. Taking precious time off this clock though. Look at that headlock there. By the uh, Mustang forward though. Must have been warranted. That was Estebo. A little grit. Got a little game. sandpaper yeah. though. I, I like it. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing. As long as you play on the edge, but you don't go over. I mean, that's what coaches talk about all the time, right? Yeah. No other games in the EDC tonight. No games. Uh, tomorrow, however, mm -hmm. you got two basketball games. Mandan's going to come to All right. Cheyenne tomorrow, 145 girls, 330 boys. You can find those. Where, Sean? Uh, Mustang Media, Absolutely. I'm hoping. Yep. So click that bell and subscribe, and you'll get updated every time Cheyenne Mustang Media goes live. All right. Oh, puck center, no Mustang forward there. Blinky, looking for someone to pass to Central. Just content to get that in deep. Chip and charge, my friend. Oh, lost an edge, though. I thought that no, was Glinky. Wasn't close this time, falling. All right, Mustangs looking to get this out. Taking a look. Oh, right on the stick of the central player. Red nicely. Nice job there. That was Charlie Mashovsky playing D there on that play. Oh, huge rebound there, but uh, 
Recognized nicely by the uh, Central D. Got it out of harm's way in a hurry. All right, Central. Looking to create something here. Shot wide. Blinky there, though. Shot from the point. Oh, Dieter way out of his net. Handled that nicely. All right. Cooper Klaus almost trying to chip that one. A lot of room on this left-hand side, though. That's Glinky going to get that in deep. Central wasting no time trying to advance this puck, though. Here they come through the center. Through center ice. Oh, Dieter. A little bit of difficulty on that one. And we got a forward. Logan Nielsen coming hard on that one. A little bit of talking. Got to hold Christensen back. He's ready to uh, go. He's ready, to, ready to step in the ring. Do this. Yeah. We do not need a penalty with a two nothing lead. And, and this is well, important at to go. this point in the game. So I mean, the little things now get magnet magnified. Exactly. Out of court, like this face off right here. I mean, even all these things that you think how right. many times they happen throughout a game, now they're they're ultra important. Oh, clean draw by Iverson. It's Central first in on the puck though. Oh, that's a weird bounce. Yeah. Oh, beater out there. Oh, just wide. Oh. The shots are coming fast and furious now. We're going to say the net's off, hopefully. No penalty. There we go. No. That's the call. All right. We've got time for one more, my friend. Let's do this one. Here we go. Quickly. We're still on. Uh, when the game ends 0 0. Starts with an E. Oh. Starts with an E? Yes, sir. Again, it's going to be one of those where you say it, I'm going to say, oh. You God. laid one of these, my friend, an egg. An egg? An egg. A goose egg? Yep. Where All did right. you find this list? You just Google N hockey crazy, A through Z. NCAA. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> these are 35 slang words you might hear at an NCAA rink near you, friend. All right, Central. Oh, nice job there. That was Mason Christensen applying a little body, a little bit of elbow. Cleanly, though. That's such a thing. All right. There we go, go. Here we go. Mustangs, yeah, nice no-look pass. Just content to get that puck deep. Central playing with a little bit of urgency with 11.56 to go here. They know what they're up against right now, 2 nothing. Maybe a little too, too urgent, though, because once he let that right yeah. off the stick and it was a turnover, I think he could have held on to it, and, and I think he had time to make a play. You still, yeah. you get, right now, you see that clock, it's at 11.40, and for Cheyenne, that's going to feel like the longest 11.40. Absolutely. If the score stays, and for Central, it's going to seem right. probably like it went too quick. Central bringing up on this left-hand side. Read nicely, though, by, by the Mustangs. Oh, I thought we were going to have a backhand shot. No, nice job. Of, is that Christensen again blocking that one? With his body. Trying to get this out. That's the shots he's standing up there. Getting the puck. Cross ice pass. That's Cooper Klaus seeing nothing. Gets it back to his D. Oh, cross ice pass. Nice job. Shot from way out there. Is that Cy Hasner? Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Mustangs though with control. Just over to oh, oh boy, puck behind. Yeah, you can't do that. Three the water there too. All right. Yeah. Oh, good job by Beater. Battling on that one. All right, Central just throwing everything at Beater right now. Shots, 29-21, still in favor of the Mustangs. Beater, I mean, Beater was right up tight against that post. Yeah. He was so tight that when he made the save, he actually moved a little bit, knocked the net off. So, I mean, he's he's had a busy third period so far, but he's had a strong third He's period. dialed in, my friend. All right. Face off to the right of Beater. Look at Dylan Johnson taking that one. Nice job. Oh, but those are those man. things that we talked about. We so did. important. There it was. Win the draw, but yeah, someone did not pick up their man. And uh, luckily that puck did not go back toward the central forward. So was I, I don't know when the, chops there when the puck one. was dropped, but there's 10.32 left. So yeah. I don't know, maybe. So you're going to have about a play that happened 15 seconds ago. Now you got a chance, and you better not make that same mistake yeah. twice here. All right. Let's protect the house here and not uh, worry about getting this puck out of the zone. Central's maybe. top line. Let's team. take care of business. One to hold. Draw right. one cleanly by Central in that one. You're right. So the first one they went right through, and then that one they just won it cleanly, picked it right back, got it up to the point. I believe that was the Lockwood, I think it was, Finn Lockwood, that got yeah. that shot through and uh, we ended up uh, going up in the net. Excuse me. 
Dylan Johnson trying his luck again. That was Allen. No, it wasn't. That was Allen, man. Yep, my fault. All right. Cheyenne, though, with possession. They're going to do the dump and chase. Hopefully take some time off this clock. Center, though. And the puck nice spread nicely on. Oh. Jamison Allen playing a little D. Nice job. Oh. We are going all the way down see here. It. High stick? No, I didn't think maybe say that he covered his hand or he okay. closed his hand in the pocket. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so far this period, Cheyenne you know, through about seven minutes, only registered two shots on goal. Yeah. So a lot of the play is what we saw in the in the uh, second period and first period. A lot of plays that's gonna be flipped now where a lot of plays in their right. zone rather than playing in the offensive zone. And, you know, Central's had a strong period so far, but Beater's been been better. Cooper Klaus on his strong side wins it cleanly. Nice face oh. off play there. Yeah. That's the first draw, I think. Yeah, I've seen Cooper take. Plays it on the right-hand side. That's good. Very nice. Face off on the strong side. All right. Klaus again. Back to the D. Just with the hash marks. Oh. Just a little errant on that pass. Otherwise, we have a wide open. High slot. All right. Cheyenne, we're going to come in here with speed. That is Meyer on this left-hand side. Had his, had his pocket picked a bit there. Puck, though, kept nicely in his line. Good job. Played in deep. That is big Craig Koontz there. Yeah, Meyer went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him twice. That, yeah. <laughs> twice that shift and uh, really held his own. Shot from way out. Nice job by Beater. Taking that, cutting down that angle. He's so outside his crease there. Top of the blue. All right, Central. Oh, whistle that one. I thought for sure he was passing. It had me fooled. Oh, nice little toe drag there. Oh, that, 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 was, that, off. that was off. Yeah, there, yeah. We're gonna, yeah. The nice Central, Central coaching staff is absolutely livid, and it was understandably, but that net, that net was off. He, the ref was a little slow to call it, I thought, right. but he was quick. I don't know if we can show that replay one more time there, if we can get that. It looked up, like it was almost. It's, no. we'll, have to, we'll have to wait till we yeah. get home tonight, Sean, but I thought for sure that that net was off, and then the rebound came in after that. He blew the, I thought, you know, we're up here and we got these headsets on, but yeah. I, thought, I thought the whistle was blown. Yeah. And then was, he was immediate, I mean, that he, he was, he was yeah. waving his arms, no goal. Clear from our vantage point. Yeah, I thought that that was off. But I think the only question is why and how was that net knocked off? I think it was on purpose before. Nice play by Central, but that is no goal. Well, that'll be one where I wish we had the benefit of seeing it right now right. again. Right. I guess depending on how long here that Central's going to ask for an explanation. So I'm saying they're going to say, hey, our guy has a primo, no one on him. Uh, and uh, how does this net come off? You can watch it right here. We got to got to pull up live here on our, our fans. You're not going to see what we're looking at, but uh, it's tough because the player skates right. right in front there. And it looks like that net was leg. It look like the net was off there. We have to look at it one more time. I think it's. Oh yeah. It's I think, and it's not long after. But it, puck went in. That's the way that the the official saw it at least. Very nice play. Who was that? Soft hands. Uh, was Lunsky's line that was out there. Was that Bollock? I believe it was Bollock is right hander. I think Spicer may treat left, but I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. Nice uh, patience on that one. Went, uh, top shelf. All right. We are going to resume with 8.52 remaining. Cheyenne. Oh, they issued a penalty on that one. Beater. Beater. Delay a game? Does that work all in on that one? We'll have to wait. And yeah. I'm not going to say it looked a little suspicious. Well, I, we were both, I mean, we were looking at the computer. Yeah. So we didn't. All right. This is a critical juncture of the game with 8.36 remaining. Uh, Beater was given a two-minute penalty on the play. Uh, still 2-0, though. Mustangs, oh, unable to clear. Central with a little bit of urgency here. All right, Central controlling the puck behind the goal. That was Ryder Burris. Switch we got. 
Kwame coming down from his point behind the net. Trying to generate some offense for Central. Eight minutes remaining in the period. 109 remaining in the penalty to the goalie Beater. All right, Central. A lot of room on this right-hand side. Oh, nice job by Beater again. Stay on Things it, are stay heating up. That was stay late. That yeah, was. That was Mr. Ryder Burris. A uh, little bit of cross-check. Seconds after was that. Late, and there was really no effect on the play that no. was going to happen from it. The whistle had already, already, whistle gone, already been like blown, and Beater already had the puck. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I wanted that to be open, too. I get playing with an edge, but that's, uh, uh, he's got me talking to about the ref in the season. So. All right, now. Yeah. Taking that another, puck outside of the Another zone. minute that's left here on the kill for Cheyenne, and then they're going to have roughly right around a little less than seven minutes left in the game. All right. Draw one by Central. Marcus Lunsky trying to apply some pressures. But Mustang's able to clear that one though. 7.30 remaining in the period. 40 seconds remaining on the power play. Central bringing it up fast. Oh, lost it at the line. Oh, regated. Oh. <sighs> nice shot just inside the Pults. And that was Cooper DeZeal on that one. Just as it looked like he lost control, regains it. It's un you know, unfortunate because it looked like he was going to lose the puck. Yeah. And it slid, you know, just off of a stick, you know, enough where he was able to pick that puck right back up and took a nice, hard, low shot. He was able to beat Beater. Yeah, it was, he was going down on Rogan, and he lost the puck, so Rogan went to put a stick out for it. Unfortunately, Dezeal right back on a stick and makes no doubt about it. So penalty there that uh, went to Beater. It ends up, you know, hurting Cheyenne. Right. <laughs> All right, we have ourselves a game. Goal. Not like we didn't before, but it all of a sudden got a lot tighter. 7-15 remaining, two to one, Cheyenne clinging to a one goal lead. All right, Cheyenne lifting that high. And guess who behind the net is controlling this play? Cooper Klaus. Reverse, oh, lost, that was Lyshovsky. Couldn't have any pass. Mishowski go back on it, though. Got two central players on three now. And they're able to come out of the scrum with it. That Mustang, though, and the line chain that had someone back there. That's Glinky trying to get that in deep. Partially blocked by central defense. Six and a half minute left in the game. Those, those, those got to get deep. Absolutely. Nice read at uh, center ice, so I couldn't tell what Mustang forward that was, anticipating that pass. All right, 6.20 remaining on the clock. Central hemmed in their zone a bit. They're going to break it here on this right-hand side. Oh, they had a guy open on that left wing. Pass just out of his reach. All right, nice job. Oh, and he lost it. Let's go, Central. Oh. Yeah, unable to get the puck out of the zone there multiple times. Two just, guys at the blue line. They're just fumbling, 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 and Evan Panzer makes no mistake about it. <laughs> He's going to just rip a shot top shelf right past Beater there. So we've gone from a situation where you know, we're looking at you know, Cheyenne coming into this third period here. They had, obviously, you know, Central had the one that they thought should have been allowed, but, you know, maybe feeling like they didn't get the call that they wanted. They don't take time to sulk. They take time to come down and score two goals. And so, you know, you talked about that pushback. Looks like uh, Coach Benson here from yeah. Cheyenne's going to take a timeout, just rally the troops. I, I don't blame him. Six minutes left in the game, and I don't have the time that, that those goals were scored, so that's our call here, Sean, but they had to be within, what would you say? With a minute. A minute, yeah, minute and a half to two minutes together. So, yeah. you know, for Cheyenne, this is a, a critical juncture of the game here, but they're going to have to you know, find a way to create a little bit more offense. They played so much of this third period, uh, hemmed up in their own end, and we talked about at the beginning, this isn't a game where you want to, you know, get up two and then you know tie a knot on and hang on for your life. I mean, you want to go out and get a get a third. And to their credit, Grand Fork Central has made that incredibly difficult here you know, for Cheyenne to do you know, much of anything in the offensive zone. Yeah. So, you know, the games we've watched over the last couple of weeks is just you know little things. Right there, we had two, maybe three chances to clear the puck. No, and I, and I hope I'm not looking into this too deep. 
Right. But you look at the body language of both benches mm -hmm. and you know, Central when they were ready, to, you know, the coaches were done, and it was just like all at once in unison. They got, and you look at the Cheyenne bench, and you got some guys are sitting, you know, on, on the rail, and some, you know, it's like right. You're, st you're still in this. Yes, you gave up two goals, and it's unfortunate. You got a whole different ball game now. Okay. No, but if, if you got some metal about you, and if, if you got a good team and one that's uh, going to be, you know, in it at the end of the year, you got to come out and you got to find a way to get that next one. So here we go, friends. 5:53 remaining. We are deadlocked at two. Central bringing it in again. Mustangs doing a little bit of chasing here. All right, puck swatted. And Mustangs just happy to get it out of their zone for a few seconds, bide some time. Critical time, of the themselves. critical time of the game to ask, but are you a big Jim Nance fan? Big G Jim Nance fan. I, I appreciate the Jim Nance. He doesn't do hockey, just, does he? I just thought of it because you always, you, <laughs> you always say friends, and that's kind of the Jim Nance thing. Oh. You just said it. You know, okay, friends, we buckle up or whatever you said. And it's almost like we're you know, watching Augusta here. It seems very classy, Jim uh, Nance. Yes, yeah. Is he the one that has a, uh, uh, a hole, a golf hole at his house? I think he lives near... Uh, all right. Oh, here we go. It's a chance. Oh, he scores! To the backhand, fought off two defenders. Well done, Trace Meyer. I have no idea how he was able to do that. You see in our replay. Guys, oh all my goodness. over him. Let's go! Un Unreal oh. answer by Cheyenne. If you would have asked me who scored the next goal, you just gonna—I was gonna bite my lip and say, "Oh, come on!" Oh, that is huge. And and what an effort he had to make too. I mean, and he had to do that all on his own. I mean, there was no one coming down there to, to help him out. There was no one that he could, you know, get a puck off to. I mean, he kind of just put the team on his back. Right Stay there. on your feet, yes. fans, because that was huge. Let's go, Trace Meyer. Well done, young man. All right, here comes Central again. Oh, inside, outside move. Oh, Randall State here. That's off again. Yeah. And you look at, yeah, at the, the coaching goal. There it is coaching again, they're staff. saying, yeah. Of the four on the bench, three of them had their hands up in the air, kind of motioning like, what the heck? I mean, this is, yeah, I think this is maybe the fourth time this period. You had, had that <laughs> inside, one. You had, yeah. the, you had the one that, obviously, the, the uh, goal that was not allowed. We had another one that we talked about that he saved. And I think there was maybe one other one. So. You know, they're getting an explanation right now, and, and Central wants one. You yeah. Five minutes left in the third, and they're wondering, how, is, how does this keep happening? It's not happening on our end. Oh, <laughs> got, got a lot of on that end right now. All right, so I'll just, yeah. we'll update you. Shots 31-26, 5-0-1 left on the clock. Mustangs cling into a one-goal lead over Central. If you're just tuning in, get your pop, get your popcorn right now because you are in for a barn burner in these next five minutes. All right, Central wins a draw. Shot from a distant beater, though. Able to handle that. Oh, let's, hey, 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 hey. You know, Sean, we have the advantage of, of sitting where we are, and, and, and we see when pucks get covered and things like that. You know, some of these pucks are getting covered, and there's there's so much traffic right around the net, and, and uh, some of it, I wonder if it's, just pushing and shoving to push and shove. I, that one there, I thought yeah. Beater had well before, and I right. I think it's you got 10, you 16 to 18 year olds out of the ice right to, now. That just to get in the goalie's head a little bit. I I just think there's a lot of testosterone. Yes, I, right. I think maybe it's I want to show that you, know, that you know this is my area of the ice or whatever the case might be. All so. right, again on that right hand side, the draw goes to Cooper Klaus, and he wins that cleanly. Oh, that puck did not get through. Oh, my there goodness. There we go. Get up there, there with him. You got two Let's on go. one. 441. We got, oh, read nicely by the central D. That was two nice. on one, but they were coming back hard there. Nice play there by Finn yeah. Lockwood. He was trying to go close. Being him yeah. was trying to go across to Charlie Lashofsky. Oh, yeah, Lockwood made a nice yeah. play to intercept the pass. play there. Then it came back to close, and he just, you know, tried to rip a shot off, unfortunately. Puck the foot good up and in the netting. So. All right, 436. Remaining. What else would you be doing right now on a, on a Friday night? Great hockey game. Yeah. We could be watching whoever we're playing. I mean, just two yeah. other random EDC. This has been a fun game. Beautiful weather. Two teams giving it their all right now. Oh, good job by the Mustangs closing in two of them on that one. Shot from the point, Beater. 
Nice quick pad save on that one. Able to, able to track it, even though a little bit of traffic in front. Mustangs playing high, just getting this out. Here we go, nice job, Ian Iverson. Get it down deep, get it down deep. He has, he's battling hard. He's got control behind the net, puts on the brakes, looking for someone. Oh, could not find anyone. All right, Mustangs though, able to get possession. That's Blinky, I don't know if he's trying to get it to the forward or get that deep, but it... Got to get deeper than that, though. Yeah. All right. Here we go, we're gonna beat it to the side. There we go, yeah, get that biscuit out. Nice job, Mason Christensen. All right, 3.35 left on the clock. Central, looking to bring this in. Oh, not a lot of room there, nice. Stick handling at the line. Who was that? Ryder Burris. All right, Mustang, nice weight on that. If you're a curling fan, good weight <laughs> on that shot by the Mustangs. All right. There's our last goal scorer for Central, trying to create something. Oh, good hit. It's right in the Central. All right, Mustangs looking to get this out. That's Cooper Klaus. Oh, chipped ahead nice nicely. Wyshowski, and able to get that in deep, get off the ice. Short and hard, let's go. That's huge, he comes off there with three minutes, and that means right. that they're gonna be fresh to get yeah. out there for oh, the final minute 30. Dangerous pass there. And to see who picked that pass off there, that was an I don't know. There he is. We're talking about the yesterday, and we talked Solid about. Solid game. We talked about you gain coaches' trust by you know, finding yourself in a new situation. You go out and you, and you do the job, and, and you do it very well. And you know, 247 left in the game here, and he's finding himself out there with yes. Cy Hassler and, and Kean Hannistead. So you know, taking advantage of opportunities presented the to right you. Right place at the right time, and I mean that's a three or four big plays. Mm -hmm. You know. All right, 2.47 remaining. Both teams do still have their timeout, so I assume that. Well, no, to be used ours. That's, oh, yeah. you're right. I apologize. Yeah. I apologize. You are right. All right. Looking back. Central's on got one in their pocket. We good, did not. Good timeout by Coach Benson. Yeah, right? absolutely. There he is. The, Kale Kwame looking to get the Steelers forward. Oh, trying to get him go. Nope. Nice job by Cheyenne. Not giving much time to space there. Oh, good hit. Hello, there he is, Charlie Estebo lowering the boom. Oh, now hit from behind. Oh, good job. Bodies are flying with 2.11 remaining. Hey, that's late. Take him off. These are, these are situations where we're here that have zero direct impact on the game. Yeah. But if you allow them to, to escalate into something where guys are starting to parade the penalty box, then they have an impact on the game because if one team gets a power play out of it, it's it's gonna it's gonna come back and bite yeah. someone in the butt. And so you have to be disciplined here. Whatever someone says to you, whatever they you have to be able to put it aside. You have to be mentally right strong enough, thick to, skin to put those things off. Whatever yeah. either side that you're on, whether yeah. you're Central or Cheyenne. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, could you know, be a, a game get, changer at this juncture. Two eleven. Yeah, absolutely. You do not want to be that guy either. That. That skate to that box at this juncture. I, and Coach yeah. Benson's talking to the official, and I'm, I'm yeah. guessing that's probably his point, is yeah. what the heck is happening on some of these plays here. But All right, Cooper Klaus. <laughs> Central's yeah. had their questions too. About yeah. that, you know, Cooper the Klaus thing. appears to be the man. Oh, fanned on it, but just nice. A little too much mustard on that one. That's going to go for icing. Ah, too bad. Yeah, it seems he's uh, critical to uh, face up draws. Even on strong and weak side, we've got... Oh, uh, we cut the tension here, Sean. Let's do one last dad. Yeah. yeah. Today's right. broadcast is sponsored by Marvin. Marvin, imagining and creating better ways of living. So we appreciate the support of Essentia and Marvin Windows and Doors. Absolutely. Got to pay the bills, friend. Absolutely. All right. Oh, Cooper Klaus is going straight ahead on that one. Oh, back door. Oh. Oh, boy. That was between the legs. Pans, we got to, that. Yeah. Right over the Where is the coverage on that with 157 remaining? That's a nice tip there by Burris, too. Yes. Wasn't it? Holy smokes. Wow. I thought for sure that. Unfortunately, that was going to find its way through, but Beater was, was tall to the task. Yeah. Thank goodness. There wasn't uh, there wasn't much help. <laughs> so we'll keep our eye on Diedrich here, too. He's about at the hash marks. He at 157. I assume at some point that. He's going to make his way out to the yeah. central bench. Klaus again taking this critical draw. 
Both number one lines up there. Oh, Panzer wins that back to the point. Oh, read nicely by Mustangs. And, oh, pass center. Okay, Cooper Klaus trying to get there that NDP does. That's Kwame on his horse. Make him go 200 feet. There we go, 141 remaining in what has been a thoroughly entertaining game. Oh, off the backside there. The, who was that? Is that a, no, was that Christensen? Christensen, didn't see it. And somehow worked in our favor though. 125, here keep an eye out, here he goes. Bench. Dietrich is gone. Extra attacker for Central. One minute, that's gonna go over his head. That's Cooper Klaus. He's in a foot race with, uh, can he do it? it. Oh. oh, he missed the net. I don't think his angle is very great. No, I know. And he had a, who was that, was that Kale? Kale Kwame yes, barreling yep. down on him. So one minute remaining. Oh, puck is out. Central's gonna have to regroup at center ice here. Gonna have to wait for them to get onside. They do. Oh, read nicely by Beater. And we're gonna go off the glass. They yeah, do. Is that gonna, gonna get out? out? That is out 44 seconds on the ticker. Central. Having a, These games are tough on the ticker, to Sean. Bring <laughs> that in the clock. Oh, get it up, get it out. Oh no, off a glove. Five Central's on two. got five on two, you're right. Oh, just missed. Oh, I, oh my goodness. Big play Get there. this out, get it. No, they can again. Oh, this is reminiscent of their second goal. Cheyenne, two opportunities to get the puck out of the zone. Oh, there he is, Mr. Cooper Klaus. Captain, get it out. It is out. How many times can he touch the stove and not get burnt there? Nine shot? iron Holy shot smokes. by Lashovsky. Five seconds remaining. I've had this in my pocket all night. Are you ready? Turn off the nights. The party is over. Cheyenne Mustangs three. Central Knights two. Undefeated no longer. Yeah, this was this was a huge win for Cheyenne, and I know that it's early, early into the season here, but I think this is the type of win here that this is a type of win that binds teams. It brings them together. It's a character builder. This was not easy by any means. You had to fight to win this one, and it was, they talk about some games, it, it, it was a men's game out there tonight. Both of these teams played incredibly hard. You look at the shots on goal, 32-30. That third period by Central uh, for Cheyenne to give up the two, and Central pushed and pushed and pushed. And, and Central, they probably didn't have the first period that they wanted. I think they had four no. shots on right. that. Second period, Cheyenne elevated that lead from one to two. Uh, so I thought Central played a little bit better in the second. By far the third, they were the better team on the ice. But there was a couple of plays that Cheyenne was better, and in those couple of plays, uh, they were able to uh, see their you know, see, see their season win total yeah. elevate by one. So you look at the standings right now, and you know Cheyenne, that's going to tie them with Central uh, and with Fargo Davies. Both those teams are idle tonight. Yep. Um, it's going to elevate them above North, who just beat them the other day. So, you know, first Cheyenne, they're going to go to three and four uh, in the, well, actually not in the EDC, in the EDC, they're going to go to, to three and three. So, you know, on the central side of things, it's probably certainly frustrating. Um, you know, you think you score a goal in the third period and it gets, you know, disallowed, and then you pop two right away, you know, almost back to back, and, yep. and you're the better team. And, and by the end of it here, I mean, you're going to leave the sports arena. Well, as we talked about, this is going to be five in a row for Cheyenne over Central. And, you know, the last two seasons, Cheyenne did end Central's season in the EDC tournament at their own rink, and so we kind of have a little, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a rivalry because right. it's not, <laughs> it's still pretty lopsided in wins and losses, but <laughs> over the last couple of years, I mean, these have been really, really tight games, and, you know, when you get a lot of the same kids that are playing in those games against one another, and, you know, certainly, you know, all these kids know each other anyways. It doesn't right, matter. Right, right. You know, so, you know, this is kind of a gut check win for Cheyenne. I mean, Coach Benson called the timeout, and as we talked about, it looked like it paid off. Well placed. Yeah, could we be Central's kryptonite? All right, players that stood out for you tonight. Well, it's, you know, I was thinking during the game too. Yeah. If, you know, maybe th three stars after a win here. You know, if, if you're thinking about, obviously, you know, Cheyenne did score. You know, they scored three goals, and they came from, you know, Klaus Lashovsky and Trace Meyer. So, you know, we could talk about that entire line, whichever one you want to give it right. to. You know, I thought Klaus had a lot of draws too. I mean, he plays in the center position, so you're not going to have Lashovsky and Meyer. But that last goal by Meyer, where he was one on two and a total individual effort, and he you know, puts it in the back of the net, 
I think my one star though tonight, I think it's got to be Jaden Beater. Uh, that I, at least in my mind, that yeah. third period, you know, he had to stand tall, and there was a lot of plays around his net. It wasn't an easy third period, right? He did give up the two goals, you know, but there was a lot of plays where, you know, tonight that. Yeah, and you've he, got a goalie here, zero minutes played at the varsity level until this until, year. And actually, he did have right. one. Did he? I think he played one game last year uh, at, in uh, in Mayville. Oh, okay. But that's one game, yeah. right? I mean, so <laughs> he's really, I mean, he's he's taken that opportunity and he's ran with it. He said, you know, his numbers coming into the game here, 87 save percentage, 2.16 goals against average and a 2-2 two two record. You know, so what you want out of your goaltender is give us a shot to win. Absolutely, right? talked, yeah. The, the other day at North, he gives up gives up one goal. That's that's giving your team a shot to win. That's giving your team a, sh a shot to stay in the game. And you know, so. when, just like in the NHL, when, and I hear it because I, I, I love my Winnipeg Jets, when you've got Connor Hallibuck behind you, the confidence just oozes yes. from yep. the team, knowing that you could go down one nothing, but you got a guy that's going to stop you know, almost everything. It, it allows it allows a lot of your players just to play so much more freer. It might allow a defenseman maybe to pinch on the blue line or step up into the play or join the rush or do whatever. You know, and for Cheyenne, you know, I, I know that that top line played a lot tonight, but you know, one of the things I said after the first is I'd like to see a little bit more depth. <laughs> we go back to it, guys like, like Hannestead and, and Estebo and, and yeah. some of the plays that they made and Ian Iverson, the defensive the core as, as a whole. You know, Madden Weber and, and Rogan and Mason Christensen. Um, you know, Jackson Blinky certainly logging a, a ton of minutes this year. You know, so you, you look at Cheyenne and, and, uh, and we talk about where they're at in the standings. You know, I mean, this is this is a win that, you know, is, is huge for them. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I mean, the season is not that long. Okay. And, you know, We've lost some close ones. You know, the Davies one we could have won. The North one. Mm -hmm. uh, you yeah, know, so you, you yeah. got to pick up a game somewhere, right? We're, we're down 3-0, yeah. six minutes in yeah. to South and come back and win that 4-3. to three. So, I mean, man, the ebb and flow well, just in the last two weeks. I mean, you look at standings, too. And you, yeah. You think about where these two teams sat in the standings. You know, Cheyenne and 7th and, uh, you know, Central up there tied for 2nd. And you, you talk about... You know, Ideally, you'd like to sweep teams, but you know these top teams. You're going to have to find oh, ways wow. that you might have to pluck one from a Red River. You're going to have to split with Central, uh, you know, and hopefully you can get sweeps, uh, you know, from some yeah, of these other you teams. Know, here in get a much improved West Fargo Packer team up there. Yes. Yeah. There's uh, those. Ooh. Yeah, and they are, they already have the loss to Davies. They got the loss to North. Yeah. Those top six teams, yeah. man. There's no gimmies. So I mean, South Shanley, that that's a team that hopefully, right. you know, they could. You know, try to sweep and get them here at the, yeah. at the sports arena. So yeah, and they were just manhandled by Central. They were yeah, yes the other day. Yeah. So yeah, as yeah, so, you know, like we said earlier, I think that this is something that you know, if you're in that locker room right now, what more could you want? Uh, you, yeah. You you came back after a tough loss. You want to see how your team rebounds. They come out. They have a great first period. They have a good second period. You know, the third period it was a little more difficult, but they made enough plays to, to come out. Right. It's a Friday. Yeah. You, you, you know, your team showed what you're made of, and yeah. and you bounce back, and, and you had a great win. And right. And, and go figure. And, and just like you said, you know, the body language on the bench after yes. that. It, you're yep. a little worried. We're worried. It's like, oh man. You know, how many times we've seen it I where was say, you know, against Red we, River, yep. all of a sudden, oh man, two to two, we're good. You know, yep. ends up five to five two, two. Uh, right. uh, 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 on the other side, and but. <laughs> When team and regardless of what team it is, when you're up and then the other team scores two goals like that right away, you all yeah. I mean you see it so many times where now it's three to two and just like you said against right. Red River and and you know it's the <laughs> not the so at the high school level the professional level too yes and where these yeah. guys it's like they're getting paid millions and it's like oh man what you know what what's happening you know where you almost need a, a psychologist on the bench saying okay what's your mindset right now yeah. you know so yeah. <laughs> Thoroughly entertaining game. Hey, all the uh, people behind the scenes at Mustang Media, awesome job today. It was a little little late getting there, but uh, trying to figure out our uh, but we got our audio. So it, yeah, it shows that our team here that we have at Mustang <laughs> Media is, is top notch. They get they got us on the air and they got us, you know, moving and going. And yeah, as we talked about uh, broadcast tomorrow, you have girls basketball is at one forty five and boys basketball is at three thirty. Yep. Subscribe to uh, Cheyenne Mustang Media on YouTube. Absolutely. Uh, you get notified every time. You can like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, I guess X now, and then Ooh, X. and then Instagram, and you can follow along with 
with all the action. So this was an exciting one here tonight. As Cheyenne's going to prevail 3-2 to two over Grand Forks Central for Jordan Litovsky. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate all of you tuning in. We'll see you again on the 19th. That's right, against Devil's Lake. No more three-week wait. That's see you next right. week, friends. Alrighty. Good night. Good night. Even if it makes me blind, I just want to see the light.